Papa's Parfait Girl is a Doki Doki Literature Club fan mod that is not affiliated in any way with Team Salvato. It is designed to be played only after the official game has been completed and contains spoilers for the official game. Game files for Doki Doki Literature Club are required to play this mod and can be downloaded for free at that place or on Steam. By playing Papa's Parfait Girl, you agree that you have completed Doki Doki Literature Club and experience spoilers for any of that. I agree! Sup, it's Hallie, and welcome to Papa's Parfait Girl. This mod is by the same person who did Consequences. And, uh, if you watched that series and you're a little worried for me saying that, well, uh, don't worry quite so much because, oh, uh, well, this one is probably going to be a bit feels punchy. It is Natsuki's perspective through Act 1 of the original game. It's probably not going to be nearly as tragic. At least, from what I read in the game page, that is the case. Oh, please enter the name of Natsuki's love interest. Yeah, that's, well, I guess it's gonna be me this time. But yeah, here we go. Let's see what this is like. She finally gets the rain clouds treatment. Wow, four boxes full of Olga. Thank you, Papa. Well, it is your birthday, after all. <laughs> no, aren't you glad we stopped at that garage sale? You were right. It was worth delaying our trip for her. Parfaits! Papa laughs. Of course, no matter how old you get, you'll always be my little parfait girl. Natsuki giggles. I can probably read... Oh, no, I guess... Hmm, it is third person right now. Yeah, I think 14 now. Are you trying to tell me you're too old to go out for dessert with us, Suki? What is it? Papa, it's a little embarrassing when you call me Suki. Papa grins. Why? Afraid a cute boy might hear. Natsuki turns beet red. Papa, I'm serious. Look out for that truck! Four years later. Do I, got, do I got to click to make it go? Apparently. Uh, hmm. I still don't know if we're actually in her perspective or not. Monday, start of the school week. Okay, now it is. It's also my 18th birthday. I take a deep breath to ready myself and then leave the safety of my bedroom. Which is astonishingly a lot like Siri's room. Papa's sitting in his chair, looking at the photo album again. He hasn't been well since... since Mom died in the car crash. He obviously called in sick at work again today. He does that too much. I know he's going to try and ignore me again, but... Papa? Go away, Suki. Hearing him tell me to go away in the same breath as his pet name for me hurts. There was a time when he said it with such affection. It's my birthday. Don't remind me. Can we skip school and go out for parfaits? He f or he flinches as I say this. Like we used to. He just looks down at the album in tears. I know from previous experience that if I tried to give him a hug, he would react badly. You said I would always be your little parfait girl. It's your 18th birthday. You should be a grown woman by now. Hanging out with friends, making me worried about boys. Not. He shakes his head. I leave to go to school. I know he doesn't want me around right now. As I walk out, I hear him mutter. Maybe we'll go out for a parfait later today. Although my heart leaps on hearing this, I pretend that I didn't hear. I know the likelihood of us actually going is small, but even that will vanish completely if I do anything besides life right now. It's time for the literature club meeting, my favorite part of the day. It's a time when I get to hang out with my friends, read whatever I want, even manga, and just enjoy myself. I arrive a little early. No one else is here yet. Instead of going to the closet like I usual, I sit down at a desk. I pull out a piece of paper and start writing. The Lost Princesses, a poem by Natsuki. I'm absorbed in my writing when... Natsuki, why didn't you tell us it was your birthday today? I hadn't seen the others come in. Embarrassed, I quickly hide my poem. If I'd known earlier, we would have arranged something for you. Monica, so talented and popular. How did she find out today was my birthday? 
She always seems to be aware of what's going on with her friends, which includes me, of course. So I suppose I shouldn't be too surprised she knows. Today's your fourth day, which you know, Lori! Sayori, always a ball of sunshine. Ava to cheer up and make everyone's day better. Though I doubt even she would have any effect on Papa. But we don't have presents or even a cake. Yuri, so smart and caring, if you can get past her shyness. We're almost like mirror images of each other. While this does cause us to clash more, I think I'm closer to her than any of my other friends. Hey, it's no big deal. If it really mattered, I'd have said something to you guys. Boo! Besides, my dad and I are going out together later today. At least, I hope we do. We sort of have a birthday tradition to uphold. Even though we haven't done it in four years. And let me guess, you were probably hoping I'd bake a cake or something, even though it's my own birthday. Not necessarily. Yeah, right. And even though yours are the bestest. Thought so. Well, you can just forget about it. Even if I get you a birthday present? I don't want one. Who doesn't like getting presents on their birthday? I glance towards the closet where my manga is stored. I... I have everything I want. Are you sure about that? What's that supposed to mean? Well, I've never seen you with... I mean... Never mind, I just thought maybe... Siri suddenly bounces up and whispers something in Monica's ear, then drags her away. They go to the far end of the classroom, and soon whispering and giggling can be heard from them. I uh, think I should be worried about what those two are planning. Probably. I try to listen to what they're saying, but except for the giggles, I can't really hear them. Siri is almost certainly trying to get Monica to help her trick me into making cupcakes for tomorrow. After a few minutes, they return. I'm guessing there's something you two want to say to me. So, I was planning on inviting a friend of mine to our club meeting tomorrow. And maybe it might help if you brought cupcakes? I knew it! You're just trying to trick me into baking cupcakes for a late birthday party you want to throw me! Are you planning on bringing me a present, too? I don't want a birthday celebration! I don't want a party! I don't want a birthday cake! I don't want presents! I'm too older for cute kid stuff like that. You know, don't even know what I was planning to get you. Monica laughs. Okay, that's enough teasing, Sayori. Seriously, she does have so much she wanted to bring tomorrow, so if you were to make cupcakes for them... I make certain to let my irritation show. I promise none of us will even mention your birthday, much less bring a wrapped gift tomorrow. I don't trust that giggle Siri's trying to hide. Fine, I'll make cupcakes, but you had better bring someone new tomorrow. Okay, everyone. We kind of got off track today from our usual activities, but before we run out of time, did anyone want to talk about something they've read or written recently? Actually, I need to go. If it's because of... No, it's not because of any of you. My dad and I, like I said, we have something planned that if I don't leave now... Of course, we understand. At least, I hope we have something planned. I go straight to the restaurant we used to go to. If he doesn't come without me, he'll never come. As I enter, I'm a little surprised to see Papa is already here. He's sitting at a table, having just taken his first bite of a parfait. He looks at me sadly for a second, then I see the anger build up in him as he looks away. I want to go up to him and steal a bite from him like I used to. I want him to buy me a parfait of my own. I want to just sit down at the same table as him. But I can tell he's upset enough already and I don't want him to make a scene in public. Again. So instead, I stand off to the side of the doorway and watch him eat. He angrily jams the spoon in as he takes each bite. He hasn't even eaten a quarter of it before he stands up, throws it all away, and walks out with barely a glance in my direction. I watch him as he leaves and begins walking home alone. Guess the party is over. So far, this is the best birthday we've spent together in four years. When I arrive home, I go straight up to my room and try to avoid his notice. Papa doesn't ever yell at me when I'm in my room and he never comes in. 
My friends are expecting cupcakes to throw them home. I get up in the middle of the night while I know Papa's asleep. Passing through the living room, I see he fell asleep in the chair again instead of going to bed. I can hear him crying out for us. He's dreaming the same nightmare he has almost every night. Oh, Papa. I speak to him as gently as I can so I don't wake him. We're okay. We love you. Mama's safe. We're all safe now. A partial lie, but... His breathing becomes steady and he sinks into a more restful sleep. It will be bad in the morning when he wakes up and remembers the truth. But, at least for tonight, it's possible to dream that Papa and Mama are teaching me how to bake again. It really, truly is the best birthday we've spent together in four years. I arrive at the club meeting with my tray of cupcakes. Carrie is, of course, reading by herself already. She seems to be hiding behind her book a little more than usual today. Siri and her new member are nowhere to be seen. I right, hold on, I just... One minute. If, it, if, if, if I'm remembering correctly, whenever we were playing Consequences, they always used than instead of then. And here, they use then instead of than. They have it perfectly backwards, and it's kind of mystifying. Anyway... She's probably trying to convince some random girl that she ran into the hallway to come with her. Monka perks up as soon as she sees me and comes over. Hey, you made them! I'll be honest, I wasn't certain if you are going to after yesterday. Siori had better actually bring someone if this turns into a surprise birthday party. I, gla er, I glower at her. I promise we didn't buy or make you anything. Everyone, new mama is here. Why is Monica trying not to laugh like that? I told you, don't call me a new member. I look over and see that Sayori is escorting a boy into the room. On seeing them, Yuri perks up and goes over to introduce herself. Siri notices me looking at them and mischievously removes her bow and sets it on his head. So, we promised we wouldn't get you a wrapped gift, or make, or buy you anything. But Sayori still put a bow on something for you. Monica gives me a mischievous wink and then carefully moves out of the punching range. I see the bow fall off his head and Siri pick it up and clip it back onto her hair. I don't think he even noticed it was ever up there. Seriously? You brought a boy? I cannot believe they are trying to set me up with someone. Way to kill the atmosphere. Even if he is kind of cute. Huh, Howie, what a nice surprise. Welcome to the club. His eyes get wide as he looks at us. What are you looking at? Was he checking me out? If you want to say something, say it. I don't care how cute he is if he's too shy to speak his mind. S sorry. Not scared. Hmm. I see him appraising me. I begin to feel self-conscious about my appearance. I know I look much younger than 18. The same where he whispers something in his ear. I'm certain it was about me somehow. Anyway, this is Notsuki, always full of energy. And this is Yuri, the smartest in the club. D don't say things like that. Uh, well, it's nice to meet both of you. And it sounds like you already know Monica, is that right? That's right. It's great to see you again, Hallie. Monica, Monica smiles mischievously at him before advancing my way. I suddenly realize he has no clue why he's really here. Monica and Siri have conspired to put us together and without asking either one of us. Looking towards Siri, I can tell by the way she won't meet my gaze that she was at least aware of the plan before the club meeting started, even if I, or if she wasn't directly involved. Y you too, Monica. Come sit down, Holly. We made room for you at the table so you can sit next to me or Monica. I'll get the cupcakes. Hey, I made them. I'll get them. If you want me to have a chance with him, at least let me show off my specialty. Sorry, I got a little too excited. Uh, then how about I make some tea as well? Monica and Sayori arrange a few, er, arrange few desks to form a table and sit down. Yuri joins them. I notice that Monica, Sayori, and Yuri are seated in such a way that no matter whether Hallie sits next to Monica or Sayori, I'll be sitting next to him as well. Looking a little uncertain, Hallie sits down next to Sayori. I grab my wrapped tray from the corner of the room. I proudly march back to the table, tray in hand. 
I know I have nothing to be ashamed of with these. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Woo! I theatrically lift the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes that I've decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make ears. So cute! I had no idea you were so good at baking, Natsuki. So, Monica, we both know I made these exact same cat cupcakes just a couple weeks ago. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Siri grabs one first, then Monica. Howie follows. That's delicious! Siri talks with her mouth full and has already managed to get the icing on her face. Howie seems hesitant to eat. I start to worry a bit. Maybe he doesn't like cupcakes. He finally bites down into it. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Relief floods through me, uh, though my nervousness doesn't go away completely. Well, why are you thanking me? It's not like I made them for you or anything. Eh? I thought you technically did. Siri said... Well, maybe. But not for, you know, you, dummy. I can't believe I said that to him. I really don't know how to talk to boys. All right, all right. This is not going right at all. Yara returns to the table, carrying the tea set. I hadn't noticed she had left. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, uh I guess. <laughs> Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. <laughs> but that's not... Monica, I know you're trying to push Hallie and I together, but that's a little harsh on Yuri. You can't force things, and besides, Hallie might prefer someone more womanly than I am. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. I'm glad. Yuri, er, I'm so used to reading in my normal voice when it's narrating. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. Monica raises an eyebrow and smiles at Hallie. Now what is she going to do? So, what you made you consider the larger club? Um, well, I haven't joined any clubs yet, and Siri seemed really happy here, so... That's okay, don't be embarrassed. We'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make the club fun and exciting for everyone. Monica, I'm surprised. How come you decided to start your own club? You could probably be a board member for any of the major clubs. Weren't you a leader of the debate club last year? <laughs> well, you know. To be honest, I can't stand all the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. I'd much rather take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. And if it encourages others to get into the literature, then I'm fulfilling that dream. Well, it really is a great leader. Yuri also nods in agreement. Then I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are very interested in putting out all the effort to start something brand new. Especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention, like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events, like the festival, that much more important. I'm confident that we can all really grow this club before we graduate. Right, everyone? We all enthusiastically agree. I noticed the look of frustration quickly pass over Maka's face, as if that wasn't how she wanted the conversation to go. She passes Yuri of all people a meaningful look for help in salvaging things. What was it that Monica was trying to get from that conversation?